Welcome friends to another r slash entitled parents video. Alright kids, I raised you and I'm not asking for much now in my retirement years. All I need is for you to hit the like and subscribe buttons down below. That said, our first story of the day is by Himabi. Entitled father steals money as payment for a good deed. I thought it would be a few months since I had another entitled parent encounter, but less than a week since my last one, it happened again. I was working on the tills at my supermarket serving customers during the school rush. It's around 4 p.m. I had just got done serving an elderly gentleman and was now serving a middle-aged man and his daughter. The previous customer was stood to the side putting away his loyalty card and bank card when I noticed he had dropped his bank card instead of putting it away. The father who I was serving, now referred to as Entitled Dad, quickly ran over and grabbed his card. I assumed he was going to return it, but instead he ran back to the till and tapped the old man's card on the reader to pay for his shopping before grabbing his items and running after the old man. I had no customers after Entitled Dad, so I approached the two as they were talking and overheard the Entitled Dad saying, You dropped your card back there mate, can't be losing that. He then promptly handed over the card and turned to walk away. I intervened and told the old man that Entitled Dad had used his card to pay for his shopping. I also waved to our on-duty security guard to stop the Entitled Dad, which he did. Myself and the old man walked down to the Entitled Dad and I asked him to stay put while I called the manager down. Entitled Dad played dumb, spouting, You have no right to stop me. I need to get my daughter home. This is false imprisonment, etc. Once the manager arrived, I explained what had happened, and this scumbag of a person had the audacity to say, I could have kept his card and used a lot more. Is that what you want me to do? He shouldn't be complaining about poop. I only used a bit. He then turned to the old man and said something equally disgusting. Just consider it compensation for giving it back to you. At this point, the old man was asking if he could get his money back. I headed back to my till and printed a copy of the last receipt, took the old man to customer service, got his transaction refunded, and he was happy to leave there. He didn't want to press charges for theft or anything like that. We made Entitled Dad pay for his shopping and he stormed off. And yes, he is now banned from the store. So in your opinion, was the outcome for the Entitled Dad in this story too lenient for your liking? Should the Entitled Dad have faced harsher punishment? Let me know what you think in the comments down below. Our next story is by Dubly. I cut out my dad for what he did 20 plus years ago. Two months ago, I, female 27, was talking on the phone with my dad, male 52, about an upcoming visit my stepsisters were planning for a couple of days. The conversation turned into small talk and catching up on our daily lives when he changes the subject and very casually mentions physically abusing my mom when they were married. This was the first time I had ever heard of anything like this happening and am beyond shocked. For a little backstory knowledge, my parents divorced when I was three, so I have no memory of them being together. After divorcing, my dad remarried to my stepmom who had two kids of her own already. I'm the only child of my parents. My stepmom passed away when I was 15. After she passed away, my dad made many bad financial decisions and essentially ended up being homeless. Because my parents had been on good terms despite being divorced, my mom offered to let him move into her basement as a temporary renter until he gets back on his feet. So currently my dad's renting the basement in my mom's house. Anyway, I can't remember what we were talking about when he said it, but after he did, I was stunned and asked him to repeat himself. He then continues to casually repeat what he said and even adds to it, saying it was very bad and there were a few times he scared himself with how badly he had hurt her but then quickly says he learned from it and changed and never once hit my stepmom. I'm floored, uncomfortable, and confused and make an excuse to end the phone call. I'm so shocked from what he said and the way he said it that I immediately tell my boyfriend and start sobbing. My boyfriend then suggests I take some time and talk to my mom about it and get her side of things, so I do. I invite her to my place for dinner and let her know there's something serious I'd like to talk about. My mom comes over and I tell her about the conversation and how upset I am. She confirms what he said and adds to it. She tells me that all throughout their marriage he was incredibly controlling, dictated what she could or couldn't wear, who she could talk to, where she could go, to the point that she wasn't allowed to go to the grocery store by herself. She said it reached a point where she felt so isolated, she's from the Philippines and immigrated to the US when they married, so she had no connections here and depressed when he hurt her, 
She almost wished everything would end, and then said that there were a couple times so bad she thought everything was going to end. I'm stunned. I've always seen my dad as a quiet, gentle man. Sure, I've seen him mad before, but I never imagined him capable of hurting people in this way. I asked her why she never told me about it, and she said it was because she wanted me to have a good relationship with my dad and not hate him. She then tells me she's forgiven him for it a long time ago, and she'd like for me to do the same and let it go. But I can't let it go. Over the next month, my sisters come visit and stay with me for a couple days, and I also go to a baseball game with him and my boyfriend. I don't talk to him on the phone in between the social visits and the conversation isn't brought up again by him either. During the visit in the game though, I become very aware of the way he interacts with my sisters, the way he talks to them and me, and his general attitude, and start to notice he exhibits what could still be abusive tendencies. He's very controlling over every little thing, is quick to argue, and is emotionally manipulative with everyone. I start to realize that he constantly talks down to me and at the same time makes everything about himself. I start to feel uncomfortable around him to the point that I'm getting anxiety at the thought of talking to him. I begin avoiding phone calls and text messages and when I do respond, I'm short. I can feel the anger and resentment brewing in me and know I need to confront him. I want to tell him off for the abuse he put my mom through for the crappy way he decided to tell me about it and the continued negative behaviors he still has. It takes some time, but I write everything I'm thinking and decide to talk to him about it. I ask to call him and let him know I'd like to have a discussion. I'm nervous but hopeful that having a deep conversation will resolve everything. Well, poop goes south and it goes south quick. Armed with what I wrote and a determination to stay calm, I breach the subject with him. Immediately he's defensive, he cuts me off, yells over me, and despite my many pleas for him to just give me a minute to talk, he continues to yell and very abruptly hangs up on me, leaving me shocked and crying yet again. The highlights of the conversation are such. It wasn't his fault for the abuse because he had PTSD from the military, the abuse also wasn't completely his fault because it takes two, and I need to shut up because it's not my place or my concern to be mad at him for something he did 20 plus years ago. After the disastrous call, I put my phone in the other room and tried to focus on spending time with my boyfriend. When I do look at it again two hours later, I have five missed calls and many many nasty texts from him. I respond by saying that I don't wish to talk anymore because he had his chance and he spent the whole time yelling disgusting excuses at me and I need some space. He continues to text despite me again asking him to leave me alone. The texts and calls continue so I block him on everything. It's been almost a month now and I'm starting to doubt my decision. Was I wrong for cutting him out? Should I try to reach out and reconcile? I think it's knowing that holidays are approaching that I feel this doubt and pressure to fix things, but honestly, each time I consider it, I can't bring myself to do it. I'm still so angry, disappointed, and disgusted by him and his behavior that the thought of trying to talk makes me so anxious it feels like my skin's crawling. Last weekend, I decided to unblock him in the hopes that maybe he'll try reaching out. So far, he hasn't. I also went to see my mom on Sunday, thinking he would be at work. And he came over while I was over and walked right past me without any sort of acknowledgement. I don't know if I should force myself to do the uncomfortable thing and try to talk again, or if I should continue my new normal of not having a relationship with my dad. Now I'm definitely no professional, but in my opinion, I would try to keep my focus on the way he reacted when you wanted to talk about something that mentally weighs a lot on you something they directly did regardless if it happened 20 years ago. Rather than truly man up and accept what they did and try to find some kind of forgiveness, they just resort to the same kind of behavior. Talking over you, yelling over you, not letting you get the words you need to get out, out. I think honestly if you start talking to him again, regardless of how long it's been, you're kind of just rewarding that behavior. Our next story is by Megan B 2174 Entitled sister thinks she deserves my house because she has three kids. So my grandfather was a pretty wealthy man, and because of it, he and my mother had a rocky relationship, and haven't spoken in over five years. My two sisters turned out just like my mother. 
a high sense of entitlement. They believe the world owes them everything. My grandfather's money didn't help this. They expected my grandfather to pay for a lavish lifestyle. Eventually, he ended up cutting them off, which caused them to stop speaking to him. They even tried pressuring me to do the same. I refused. Me and my grandfather were really close. I spent a lot of time at the house. It was one of my favorite places in the world, and I'm absolutely thrilled he left it to me. My grandfather was my best friend. He was the first person I came out to when I was 15, and his reaction was still my favorite. But he sadly passed away a few months ago. This wasn't a surprise by any means as he'd been battling cancer for years. My grandfather ended up leaving everything to me and two of my cousins he was also close with. I got the family home, which was a beautiful four bedroom, two and a half bathroom house with a pool and a hot tub. I was also left a good chunk of money which would really help with student loans. One cousin got my grandfather's antique car collection. Not sure if it can be really called a collection as there's only three, but my grandfather called it that so that's what I'm going with. The other cousin got my grandfather's painting collection which was pretty big and has a few pretty expensive paintings in it. But seeing as she's an artist herself, I doubt she'll sell them. I think she actually wants to donate a few of the more well-known ones to our local museum. My mother and sisters got nothing. Well, as you can likely guess, they freaked out. There wasn't much they could do about my cousin as they didn't really speak to my family for other reasons, but with me, they flipped out. My mom was mad because this was her family home and she thinks she deserves it. My sister thinks I should give her it because she's married and has three kids and she needs it more. She already has a nice house, by the way. This one's just more expensive. I don't want to give the house to her. My grandfather wanted me to have it. That's got to mean something, right? And just because I don't have family right now doesn't mean I won't in the future. Me and my boyfriend have even talked about it multiple times. Like I said, this place means a lot to me and I want to keep it. My other sister has no interest in the house. She just wants some of the money I got. She recently got out of prison and is pretty much broke. I wouldn't have had a problem giving her some of the money if it weren't for the fact that before going to prison, she stole a lot of money from me and many other family members, including my grandfather. I mean, it's OP's inheritance. OP's grandfather specifically chose that OP gets that house for a reason. If OP likes the house and OP wants the house, it's theirs. I just hope that this doesn't turn into some massive harassment, threat, target on your back type thing from your own family. Inheritance stuff can get pretty messy when money's involved. And our final story of the day is by Brandy Aidenlove. Sorry, but you have to find a new daycare. I worked in a daycare for a very short time. That was probably my third worst job, falling behind working in a factory that made custom wheels. I lasted one eight-hour shift and working in an industrial linen service for 10 days. The parents are what made it so bad. I love kids, thought it would be a perfect job for me. Like I said, the parents made me regret ever attempting this line of work. We had a child that just flat out refused to listen. Nap time was the worst. All children, zero to three years old, had to take a nap. For anyone not napping, it was still quiet time. The TV was on, quietly, and children could sit and watch cartoons. They could color, play with Play-Doh, read, whatever they chose. It was quiet time, and we spoke quietly. Well, this one child just wouldn't or couldn't be quiet. He wanted the TV louder and would turn it to full volume. He would scream when we turned it down. Color? Yeah, on everyone's page but his own, and steal all the crayons from the other kids making them cry. Play-Doh or clay? Yeah, to make balls to throw at everyone else. Read? You mean tear the pages out of the books? Even on the days we had outdoor play, he would find a way to bang on the windows and doors to bother those inside trying to nap. Every single day ended with his mom yelling at the director because we had him sit in time out. That led to the director yelling at us to find a better way to manage him. This went on for about three months. We all decided to say screw it and let him do what he wanted at quiet time, as long as no other children were hurt. TV went to full volume, we let him and the others, since we couldn't just allow him to run wild, play with the wooden building blocks, race cars all over the place, just in general chaos. This meant the babies were woke from naps because it was no longer quiet. The last three hours of the day were a nightmare. 
crying babies and toddlers that were tired from losing their naps, cranky older kids that needed that downtime, irritated adults that didn't get their breaks because they needed to help with riot control. Three days of parents picking up cranky, crying children led to a group of parents wanting to speak to the director and her not having an answer. The next day, the director sat in during nap slash quiet time. As pre-planned, we went back to normal quiet time, only with no consequence for children not remaining quiet other than our gentle reminder that it was quiet time. It took one day for her to see the problem. All it takes is for one child to be free to be loud and disrupt everyone else for it all to break down. That evening, the mother of Wild Child was given an ultimatum. Her child was on a two-week probation. He was to learn to be quiet during quiet time, and it would include time out away from the other kids. At the end of the two weeks, the director would evaluate his progress. If significant progress had been made, he would be allowed to stay, but if he had not improved, he would be asked to leave, and she would not be given any time to secure other arrangements. Or she could use those two weeks to find another place for him, and they were free to leave as soon as she found other arrangements, and the director would let her out of her contract with no early termination fee. She argued at first, but she decided that day was his last. Fine, we had a waiting list and his slot was filled the next day. Come Monday, she arrived with him anyway. She was unable to find anyone that could watch him on short notice, so she decided to take the director up on the two weeks. Too bad for her, she had signed a contract cancellation and his spot was taken. She threatened everything. She was calling CPS, she was calling the police, the news, the state licensing board, her lawyer. The director did not back down. She left with her child. For the next six to eight weeks, she got calls from other daycares and babysitters looking for a reference to take the child. I don't know exactly what she said, because all she told us was it was carefully worded to avoid a lawsuit, but let them know they were a package deal of problems. I definitely think that kids who are acting out like this, it starts from the top and it starts with their home life. It's definitely influenced and motivated by something, and I think we can all agree it's most likely the entitled parent. But with that being said, that's all the time we have for today. So of all these stories that I've read for you today, which was your personal favorite and why? Let me know in the comments down below. And if you haven't yet, if you could like and subscribe, that would mean a lot to me. Whatever you do, whether it's liking, subscribing, turning notifications on, all of it helps grow this channel and I appreciate the heck out of it. So until next time, I'll see you all tomorrow with some more stories.